Hello everybody. So I want to take a few minutes in this screencast to talk to you about your systematics project. Now remember that you have a couple of big projects in this class. One is the plant collection project, which you know your first or your next 10 plants are due next Thursday and then your whole collection is due the following week. You have a systematics project, which I'm talking about in this screencast, and then you have your independent research project, which you've already started to, to think about. But I want to give you some more information about this sort of systematics project that you're going to be doing. So if you go into Blackboard and you look in the systematics project folder, what you will find is a description of what you need to do for this, um, your second large project in this class. And this is what the document looks like, and I'm not going to read through it with you or anything like that. You can read it yourselves, but I do want to talk about basically what you need to do. So what I've done is I've given you a bunch of uh, fictitious organisms, which you can see here in these pages. Okay, these organisms have different morphologies, okay, which you can see here in this in between these two taxa, for example. And I've also indicated you know, given you some information about these organisms that you just can't see from these drawings. So I tell you what their habitat's like, what their flowering period is, how many stamens are in the flowers, whether the leaves are variegated or not, whether the parent is hairy or not, and whether the plant has um, alkaloids or not. Okay, so all of these characters, the characters that you can see here in the morphology of the organisms in the drawings, and these characters down here, can be used to analyze these guys and produce a phylogenetic tree. Okay, so you're going to be putting together a taxon by character matrix that is going to talk about the similar the differences between these different organisms. Okay. And then you're going to analyze all of that data together in one analysis. And then you have a second set of data here. He sort of looks like 53 um, sequence characters that you're also going to be using to uh, reconstruct the evolutionary history of these organisms. So you'll be doing a molecular analysis and a morpho not morphological analysis of this fictitious group of organisms. One of the uh, first things that you have to do obviously is create your taxon by character matrix for your morphological data. And the hard part about, I mean, not the hard part, but one of the tricky things about using these um, phylogenetic software programs to, um, to reconstruct uh, evolutionary history is that you actually have to get your data into a file format that the computer program can read, the phylogenetics computer program can read. And the phylogenetics program we're using is called Winclade Nona. So I want to talk about how do you get your morph morphological data from an Excel file, say, or from a Word file into a Nexus file that you can then open in the phylogenetic software when Cladonona and then analyze. Okay, so let's talk about morphological data first. Okay, I'm going to be using not information from your systematics projects, I don't want you to give you any of the answers, but we'll use data from your, your take-home exam, your first take-home exam. So if you look here, this is the exact same table that you've all seen before and you use this data to reconstruct the evolutionary history of these organisms based on morphology. Um, and you guys did it by hand, so I'm going to show you how to do it by computer, using a computer. So all I've done is take this data and convert it into a, a taxon by character matrix um, but the character states or the characters have been polarized. Okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I have to get this data into a file format that the that Winkley and Nona can use. So what I have and what I've done on the uh, on Blackboard is I've put together a basic morphological Nexus file template and a basic molecular file Nexus template that you can use to input your data. Okay, and so those files are already up there, those templates are already up there. And they look very similar to the ones that I'm going to show you now. Alright, so let's get our data into um, a Nexus file for our morphological analysis. 
So this is our data, and here is our bare bones morphological Nexus file. I create all of my Nexus files in WordPad, but you can easily do this in Notepad or any sort of very simple text editing programs. So here's your Nexus file. There are a couple of ba basic things in this file. Um, first of all, you have to input the number of tax and number of characteristics that are in your data matrix. And for morphological data, you need to make sure that you have this phrase in the morphological Nexus file. Format symbols equals 0, 1, and 2. So what this does is it tells the computer program when Clayta Nona, listen, I'm dealing with morphological data here, and I have three basic character states. They're either a 0, a 1, or a 2. And now you may have more or fewer symbols in your data matrix. So you may, for example, if you polarize a character into, into four character states, 0, 1, 2, and 3, you would have to add 3 here. For the data that we're going to be looking at, we don't need that information. We only have 0, 1s, and 2s. And then below this matrix command is where you're going to paste your morphological data, Okay, your polarized morphological data. So if we go back to the example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose all of the text, all the data in our morphological data matrix, and I'm going to paste that data into my very simple file. Now you have to do a paste special to do this. If you just do paste, it won't actually paste the data incorrectly. So you have to say paste special, and I, and I choose unformatted text, and this is what it does. There are a couple of things about these um, phylogenetics computer programs that are a little quirky. First of all is, is that there first of all is that there cannot be spaces in the taxon names. Okay, so if you look here, what I'm doing is I'm replacing every space that's in the taxon name with an underscore. Okay. The um the reason why it doesn't like spaces and the reason why spaces confuse the computer programs is that when it sees a space, it, that when the computer program sees a space, it assumes that a character matrix has actually started. Okay? So, for example, if the, we left this space in, it would assume your first character state is P for the taxon, POPUS, but that's not what we want. Okay. The other quirky thing about um, these com these phylogenetics programs is that they don't like tabs. And so what you have to do is for the data matrix, you replace the tabs with spaces. And so spaces are okay with within the within the are beginning the data matrix, but they are not okay in the taxon names. So all I'm doing right now is I'm going through and I'm deleting any tabs and replacing them with either nothing, which is what I'm doing with the actual um, zeros, ones, and twos here. But I'm replacing the tabs at the beginning and ending uh, at the beginning of the data with spaces. So all I'm doing is getting rid of these tabs. Now, what some of you may do is you may decide, you know what, I'm not even going to use Excel or Word to, you know create my initial um, my initial character by um, taxon matrices. I like to do it. I just think it's simpler um, for me. It's easier for me to visualize. You may decide that you just want to just input the data directly into your Nexus file. I don't recommend it, but you can do it that way. Okay. So now we have our nice morphological data matrix here. We have no spaces in our taxon names, but we have spaces before the actual data. So our data matrix looks pretty good. The only change I'm going to make is, is I'm going to move our out group to the top of the matrix. And that's because the computer program assumes that whatever the first taxon in, is in your matrix, 
is your out group. The, other, the only other things we have to do before we save this Nexus file is we have to indicate the number of taxa, which is 6, and the number of characters, which is 6. And we've created our morphological Nexus file. Then I have to say, okay, I want to save this. Actually, I should save as morphological example. And here's the important part, dot next. You have to save it as a dot next file or the computer program won't read it. So we save our file and now we have a morphological data matrix that we can open in WinClataNona. Now let's do the same thing but for the molecular data in the example. Here's my bare bones sequence file. Here's my data. If you look at this bare bones sequence file, there's one major difference, and that is it says format type equals DNA. So what this this phrase says to the computer program is, hey guys, listen, we're dealing with DNA data. We're dealing with sequence data. We're not dealing with um, morphological um, data that can be um, that is consists of zeros, ones, twos, threes, etc. Okay. So we just need to get this data now into our Nexus file. So I'm just going to do a special unformatted text. So I just copied the sequences from the other file. And then we have to do the same thing. We have to get rid of these spaces in the taxon names. And then we have to get rid of the tabs at the beginning of the actual data and replace them with spaces, which with this data is pretty easy. I'm going to move my out group up to the top of the matrix like I did before. Now all we have to do is indicate the number of taxa, which is six, and the number of characters, which if I just take another really quick look, is 40. And we're done. That's our sequence nexus file. So we just go save as, and I'm gonna call this molecular example, and here's the important part again, dot next, and save it. So now we have two files that we can now easily open in WinClataNona, and I'll show you how to do that in a separate podcast. That's it, guys.